Good morning. I'm making sure I, okay, yeah, I did turn it off. So, uh, good morning. We're glad you could be here with us this beautiful Sunday morning. Who, who did eight hours of garden work like we did yesterday? Okay, no. <laughs> that was a fun day. Anyway, I should say my wife did eight hours. I didn't do that much. <laughs> but glad you could join us today. Uh, just a couple announcements to bring to your attention. Um, let's see, we are going to be having communion after the service outside. So if you would like to come for communion outside, please join us on, at door six after the service. We have got cups in the back. Uh, if you want grape juice for communion, please grab a grape juice cup. But if you prefer wine, there are empty cups there, and you can bring, grab one of those, and then we'll have communion outside with that. Um, if you're wondering why I'm wearing a robe for the second service, for those of you at home, it's normal. <laughs> this is take two for the video. Uh, the first service, eh, didn't do, didn't do great. So we're going to try it again with this one. So, uh, yeah, so that's... Um, smile, you're on camera, or something, whatever. <laughs> but uh, again, good, glad you could be here, and uh, let's take a couple moments and prepare ourselves for worship. worship, for worship excuse me. And just one more thing, um, if you could, uh, please keep the Ekstrom family in your prayers today. Uh, uh, one year ago today, Irma died, so they could really use your thoughts and prayers. Please rise. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters you have made us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 3. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer, repent then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. And Psalm 4 will read that responsively. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? 
How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking who will bring us prosperity. Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. And our second reading is from 1 John chapter 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should all be called children of God. And this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, for what we, has, for what we will be has not yet been named, known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. <coughs> Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands, look at my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures, and he told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I've had enough of you not getting my jokes, so I have to take the mask off so you can see the facial expressions. <laughs> oh, I don't know about all of you, but this seems like this week I really needed some Jesus. <laughs> not that that's not always the case, but... I mean, hopefully some of you guys have, have had that before. Where there just seems like there's times where you're like, come on, Jesus, <laughs> just a little more would, would, would be great. Or, oh, you got to turn maybe in prayer a little more or, 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 or read scripture a little more. But this, with everything going on this week, it felt like a week where we really need a little more Jesus. We need him in our lives, we need him in our hearts, we need him to guide us as we love and care for each other. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus, this is actually still Easter day. This is the day that Jesus had risen from the tomb and the disciples are gathered and Jesus shows up. He appears to them suddenly and they're frightened, they're like, there's a ghost, and because if we're honest, that would be really scary, right? Somebody just appearing in your midst. 
Like, I mean, how many of you kids have been able to scare your parents just by popping around the corner? <laughs> I know, that's just, I mean, we, we, we can get surprises. Oh, Jesus, all of a sudden he's there and they think he's a ghost. They still don't know what to make of what's happened. And he's like, no, no, peace be with you. He sees that they're afraid. He sees that they're, they don't know what to make of it. They see, he sees their doubt still, that they think he's a ghost, that he's not real. He's like, no, it, it's me. I'm here in the body. This is flesh and blood. Feel my hands. See my wounds. And it says they still don't believe him because of joy and amazement. Like they get, It's just like one of those shock. I can't believe it's here. And so he, of course, then asks, do you have something to eat? Because we all know that resurrection is, uh, can create quite the appetite <laughs> when one is raised from the dead. But here, Jesus says, give me something to eat. And you know, growing up hearing this story over and over in church, I just remember thinking, broiled fish sounds kind of gross. <laughs> I think my mom tried to broil fish once. That's probably why I thought it was gross. <laughs> just doesn't work that well. But he, has to, he, he shows them that he's there, that he's present, that he's in their midst. Like he's not joking, this is not a game, this is not a spirit, this is Jesus alive when he should be dead. And it's a cause for joy and disbelief. But actually right before this, right before this passage where the disciples are in the room, we have that story of the road to Emmaus. Where Jesus is walking along the road and he joins two of the disciples and they're talking about what's happened and so Jesus kind of questions them like what what are you guys talking about and they're like are you the only person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what happened and so we get this story and Jesus kind of explains why this needed to happen but they don't realize that it's Jesus until the very end until they share a meal together until he breaks the bread. And so much of Jesus' ministry during his life was about meeting people where they were, of, of, of kind of meeting people in their element and, and, and going from there, healing, encouraging, filling with hope and love. And the same thing happens here. He understands that his disciples are afraid. He understands that they're worried. He understands that they find it hard to believe. And he meets them where they are. Jesus shows tremendous empathy. I mean, I don't know about you, but not only this week did I feel like we need a little more Jesus, I think we need a little more empathy <laughs> in our lives, in the world today. Actually, one of my small group leaders for confirmation this last week did a lesson on, on empathy, and she had the kids, the, 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 our eighth grade confirmation students, kind of close their eyes, and, and she told them to imagine themselves as this person that she described. And it was just a, it was just a great, great lesson, because she talked about this girl who who, you know, didn't have a lot in her life, whose mother wasn't really present. And, and so she kind of described this whole scenario to the kids, and then she asked the kids to put themselves in her shoes. And the point was, a lot of times we judge others, or we look at what others do, and, and we just make assumptions without really knowing what it's like to be in their situation, to to understand what they are going through. And the kids really seem to connect with it. There were so many good comments about what that person might have been feeling and transitioned that empathy for that person to what happened in Brooklyn Center. Where we need to have empathy. We can't just judge and make like, like, like snap decisions, we have to try to walk and understand what others are feeling. To try to connect with it. I think that's a, that's a huge part of being human, of being Christian, is being able to 
listen to the pain and the hurt of others, of the frustration, and to be able to then say, okay, I understand that. So where do we go from here? How can we get better? How can we be more loving, more grace-filled? How can we create things that make sure everybody feels safe and loved and valued? Jesus meets his disciples here in this room and he knows that they're having a hard time believing it. And so he says, peace be with you. This is why everything needs to happen. And so he explains everything and he opens their minds and, and so they're able to finally connect the picture. And they're filled with this faith-filled hope and love and understanding of how the world works that their ministry, their witness, what began as fear ended up impacting the world. It's given life to us here in this room or to, to you who are at home. Sometimes it's easy to get down. Sometimes it's easy to see everything that's going wrong and kind of get a little discouraged. And I admit this last week I was a little discouraged. That's why I needed a little more Jesus, right? We need Jesus to come and speak to us. We need Jesus to come and speak words of hope and love and joy. And so today he speaks to us just as he spoke to those disciples. He says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, now I send you to go out and love your neighbor as yourself, to love others, to listen and understand where others are coming from who, who are struggling or hurting or just looking for something. Today, maybe we need a little more Jesus today. That's why you're here, I hope. <laughs> or that's why you're watching at home. And so again, we celebrate. We hear the story of Jesus' miraculous resurrection and the promise that we are children of God and that hope and joy Come with it. Amen. Please rise. And together let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this third Sunday of Easter, we pray for all in need. Responding to each petition with words echoing today's psalm, hear us when we call. Holy and righteous God, for the church, we pray. For our own congregation, for the churches, all, all our neighbors, and all around the globe, and especially for Christians in Nigeria and wherever martyrdoms threaten. O oh God, our Savior, bless your people and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For the earth, we pray. For the well-being of terrains, plants, and animals, wild and tame. For the birds, especially songbirds, whose numbers are decreasing. And for this week's Earth Day, that good will come from the worldwide observance. O oh God, our Creator, restore your handiwork and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For peace, we pray. For the end of warfare, 
terrorism and cruelty to the poor, for respectful treatment of refugees and, and all who are incarcerated, especially for Northern Ireland and other places of civil unrest. O oh God, our sovereign, bring peace to the nation and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For justice we pray, for the liberation of all who are oppressed, for an end to ethnic and economic prejudice, and especially for all the court cases in this and every land. O oh God, our refuge, protect the vulnerable and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For all who are sick and suffering, for all those who have no access to the coronavirus vaccine, for the children afflicted with the virus variants, and for everyone who fears receiving medical advice and assistance, for those who live with chronic pain, and for those whose pain is known only to you. O oh God, our caregiver, heal the sick and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. For ourselves, when we believe and when we doubt, and for our dear ones for whom we pray. O oh God, our comforter, hold us close and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. We remember before you all the witnesses of the resurrection, the saints of old, those who have died by violence or by the coronavirus, especially our relatives and friends. Today we lift up Irma Ekstrom and her family. Give them comfort and peace. O oh God, our resurrection, give us life now and forever and have mercy on us. Hear us when we call. Receive these prayers into your heart of mercy for the sake of the Holy and Righteous One, Jesus Christ, our wondrous Redeemer. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really enjoying music during the prayers and stuff. It's like, why didn't we do that before? <laughs> uh, again, just a reminder, after service, we'll have communion outside. Grape juice, if you want grape juice, grab the pre-filled cup. If you want wine, grab the empty cup, and we'll see you outside. In the night which is portrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. May our glorious God grant us a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia.